and uh, remember that uh, salvation is individ individual, not for a group. Okay, salvation is individual, not for a group. One by one, we're going to face judgment. So. Yeah, good, good word, brother. Thank you. Uh, Pastor, this is, by the way, uh, our admin team leader, Ruby, at Indian Institute. Ruby, an amazing, uh, amazing person. Thank you so much, Ruby. Yeah, for being here. Uh, I think Pastor Jess has a question that he wanted to uh, ask you. Oh, uh, yeah. Senator <laughs> And by the way, these two were born in the same place uh, about a week apart. On the same year that uh, you two. Right. Yeah. Um, so many of your fans here are Filipino expats, including myself, uh, who live and work here in Dubai to support the families, our families back home. Um, are there any OFWs here? <laughs> uh, and then some of them, they live here in Dubai for many, many years. So what sort of word of encouragement would you like to share to our Ababayans here in Dubai? Um, what I can share to them is, um, please read the Bible every day and night and you will see the changes of your life and the changes of your heart desire. Remember that? Uh, read the Bible every day and night, pray continually, and you will see the changes of your, of your life and your heart desire. Amen. Amen. Because the more you get closer to God, the more you get away from the world. But the more you get closer to the Lord, to the world, the more you get away from God. So that's different. So you will see uh, what I'm talking about because I'm talking about about the uh, the secret, uh, the knowledge of the secret of the kingdom of God. Um, later on, when you are uh, increasing, when you increase your increasing your faith in the Lord, you will understand what I'm talking about. Uh, that's the, the thing. It is a level of faith that you need to uh, to uh, go through. And there's a trials, temptation in life, but stand firm in the faith. With the build up truth, battle the right you waste. So that's the, the thing. Is uh, when you have the word of God, you are strong enough. To, uh, when the day of evil comes in your life, what I'm talking about is the day of evil comes in your life, temptation, destruction, trials, uh, you will stand on the ground with your feet fitted uh, with the readings that come from the gospel of peace. Diba? So, yun, yun yung mga kailangan natin bantayan. Um, uh, let me ask you, how's your relationship to God? How open you talk to God? How open you communicate to God? That's relationship. Same thing with when you have a uh, uh, when you have a friend or a wife. See, you communicate each other often, right? Even um, my wife, um, just like a half day or one day, uh, I didn't say her. Um, How are you, my love? I miss you. <laughs> so I'm doing that because I really miss miss her. Um, half day, one day, na hindi ko siya makita. So, same thing. Uh, about how much more with, with God. And uh, it's really, it's really, um, uh, feel good when you, when you have uh, a strong relationship with God. Because uh, when you come to uh, reading the Bible, like me, uh, I'm reading the Bible right now, and I cannot uh, uh, avoid to to, to cry like that like, like while reading the Bible. So that's why I, I can advise with you uh, build your relationship to God. And as a Christian, as a Christian, as a follower of Jesus Christ, this is I'm um, going to share with you. Let your light shine upon your brothers and sisters. Okay, if you are a Christian, then be live like a Christian, not live like a, a pagan or anything else. Um, what I'm talking about is your attitude toward uh, toward others, uh, your patience, uh, your um, your generosity, everything, everything. Uh, what your what your what your life? That's your life, okay? If you are a nice guy, if you because if you're not a nice guy, then the light within you is darkness. <laughs> so and also, uh, I'll give you this uh, verse: the light is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. If the if your eyes are are, are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Mm -hmm. So meaning, uh, your eyes is the lamp of your body. So 
Because sometimes it's especially uh, men, uh, <laughs> when you see uh, when you see a beautiful woman, then uh, something like uh, <laughs> something you you think something you think some, you you think something. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. If if you don't have if you are not strong with the word God. Because if you are strong with the, uh, with the word of God and you have relationship to God, you can see the woman, oh, it's beautiful, that's my sister in the kingdom of God. <laughs> but if you're not strong, if you're not strong, if you're not strong enough with the word of God, you'll say, oh, this is a beautiful woman, I want to get this her number. <laughs> right? <laughs> The woman can drink uh, <laughs> a little. <laughs> okay, let's, uh, thank you so much. <laughs> uh, that's a good reminder, especially here in the Bible, so many temptations. <laughs> right. Oh yeah, especially <laughs> your family is in, in the Philippines, so be strong. <laughs> be strong in the Lord, be strong in the Word of God. You will see, uh, you will see when you are reading the Bible day and night. You will see you have, uh, you have happiness, peace of mind, and you always happy, smiling like the other guy. Brother, how are you? Where are you? Good morning, good afternoon, like that. Yeah, not like something. Amen. So, all right. Thank you for that. Um, we've also read that you are very involved with the church in, in the Philippines, especially in your province in Sardinia. In fact, it's all over the news that you built a, a church there. Um, actually, we have a video clip for that, and after the video clip, uh, we're just going to ask you to uh, tell us more about your church and how the church uh, okay. changed your, your life. And our vision is to plant churches all over the world. It's not only uh, spreading the word uh, in the Philippines, but uh, all over the world. Uh, malaman nila na uh, yung pabuting balita about Jesus Christ. Uh, there is no other salvation uh, besides Jesus Christ. Kaya yun yung ano natin na uh, to inform them, to uh, educate them about uh, the word of God, where we can spread the good news for salvation to other nations. Wow. This church building will serve as a vessel. Wow. God's word for people of many nations. Actually, that's, uh, that uh, church, uh, that's the conviction of the Holy Spirit uh, to me. Uh, name it uh, the Word of God. Uh, the Word of God because we need to inform and educate people about the Word of God. That's the knowledge. The knowledge of the secret of the kingdom of God. We must be educated about that because if we don't, uh, how can we obey properly uh, to God? So uh, I'm helping the church. Actually, we are uh, we're going to celebrate um, anniversary church anniversary this coming October 13 uh, in that church. And also, um, I'm helping churches everywhere in in, in, in the Philippines in our country um, to conduct a Bible study. I open Bible study and uh, I preach uh, every once a week. And then uh, the pastors will continue to do that. And every every week there is a different uh, Bible study, uh, different places. Um, that's what we uh, are doing right now. And God is good all the time. Bless the church. Uh, a lot of the people uh, um, getting saved, um, accepting Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Because this is the most important thing in life. We don't. Uh, we're not ashamed to preach the word of God because the only Christian, okay, Christian faith, the only religion that uh, the, the the author of religion of this Christian is alive. The only author of religion is Christian is alive, and not only that, he died, and after three days he rose from the dead, and not only that, proving to the disciples, proving to the believers. 
is spending time 40 days and 40 nights just to prove them that he is alive. He came, he, he raised to, uh, he, he raised from the dead, become alive. Now he's just living, we are serving a living God, alive. And he said, there's no other way except through him. As he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. So, he um, should understand that and be proud of that. Whatever circumstances and uh, trials, destruction, temptation in life, just keep in faith with Jesus because we know that when we die, we will live again. Amen. 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 And this is for sure, brothers and sisters, this is for sure. God will come back again. We will, he will come back again. Not to forgive sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for Him. Amen. 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 Thank you. So it's last question. Let me ask this to both of you. Because, you know, there's so many young people, young men and women, young boys and girls who look up to you. Uh, you know, you're famous around the world. And uh, I know uh, because of all the way God has blessed you, you have a wonderful opportunity and platform to speak. So let me maybe start with you, uh, Jiki. If you were uh, just to say a word or two of encouragement to the young girls, the young women that are here, maybe especially the single women that are here, working, uh, going through hard times, difficult times, sending money back to their families, what would be uh, some words of encouragement that you would give them? Uh, my words of encouragement are, of course, the three Fs that I realize, uh, feed your mind with the word, with the truth, um, free your mind with the destructive thoughts, and focus on the right things. That's the key text that I want to share with you. At saka sa mga kapapainan, sa mga single moms, uh, yung mga millennials, mga daughters especially, na madami ng mga, uh, sa gadget, of course, di ba? Um, misa, duda lang sila sa gadget. But we should, as a mother, as a wife, and um, I want to empower you, encourage you to always read the Bible. Mm -hmm. Feed your soul with the word of truth. Because that's the truth, and the promises of God is there. He promised you that He will never forsake you nor abandon you. Mm -hmm. Live with His promises. Mm -hmm. yung ko sa buhay ko, no, whatever it is, whatever trials may come, um, nandiyan lang yung Panginoon na magabay sa atin. Lalo na na tayo na yung family natin nasa ibang nasa Pilipinas, tapos kayo nandito, syempre mahirap din yung mga kalagayan ninyo. Kasi yung oras, yung time, uh, na dapat nabibigay sa kanila, uh, nawawala. So, just focus on God. Pray for your husband, pray for your children, kasi that's the key, that's our weapon. Only weapon to uh, pray for them. Yung prayer talaga is very helpful. Kasi yung mga pamilya natin nasa lapas. Ito lang ishare ko sa tele, yung Kasi yung sa tulfo, mahiling kami manood ng tulfo. At ang pinaka, the most, yung parang uh, trials, yung mga problems na tinitake up doon, is yung couple, yung married couple. About marriage talaga. Na nagkihiwalay kasi yung mga iba, nag-asawa na dito or sa Pilipinas, pag-uwi pag nila. Kasi ang daming trials kasi temptation pag magkahiwalay kayo ng asawa na dapat hindi. Pero, dahil sa hirap ng buhay, ba kailangan naman natin magtrabaho. So, nangyayari na magkakahiwalay kayo ng mag-asawa. Pati yung mga anak, minsan napapaliwara. So, just focus on God. Prayer lang talaga. Um, and without without God in your life, life makes no sense at all. Kailangan, you need God in your life. You need Jesus Christ. And you need, you need to have a relationship with Him. So, yun lang. Thank you, thank you. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. How about you, final words for some of the young men and boys out there? Yeah, um, first, um, thank you so much. And I hope that all of you and your friends who you will invite every uh, Sunday? Friday. Friday. Not every Friday uh, service here. Um, I'm hoping that to hear the word of God. And also, um, I will just want to remind you this. The world will look at outside appearance but God is look at in your heart so sometimes sometimes uh, uh, people will criticize you sometimes uh, they mock you about following Jesus Christ about our, our faith but 
As long as you have personal relationship to God, God will exalt you. Yes. Um, just just uh, learn how to humble yourself before God and before others. That's very important in life. And being a Christian, being a Christian, your daily activity should come from your new identity. Remember that, I will say it again. As a Christian, as a Christian, your daily activity should come from uh, from your new identity. So, uh, being a Christian, let your light shine upon your brothers and sisters, and encourage you to read the Bible because you will see the changes of your life. Uh, this, uh, do it, do, do it. Uh, in in one month or two months, just read the Bible every day and night, and you will see. You, and you can make decision after that. You can make decision. Sin is still available in the world, so you can you can go back and doing a uh, sin. Just do it, try, and uh, and um, you, you will see the changes of you in, in your life. How God changed your life, how God manifests in your in your in your life. So that's very important. And kami ng asawa ng wife ko, lagi kami nagawain ng pero now before. We always keep uh, keep fighting, but uh, right now, um, <laughs> no, right, fighting is a case in the case. Now. Thank you so much for uh, this uh, privilege. This is this is not accident, you know. I'm just telling you this. Uh, all things work together for good. This is not an accident that you are here. This is a blessing in uh, um, God's plan that you are going to hear the word of God today. Amen. You know what? Because He loves you so much. Okay? He loves you so much and is waiting for you to, uh, to embrace Him, to accept Him as your Lord and Savior. Amen. 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 Thank you, brothers and sisters. Thank you both. Thank you for those great words. I can't tell you how much uh, I appreciate it. It's, it's uh, you know, you hear about uh, an important or famous person, and you hear good things about them, but until you meet them, and you see firsthand that they really are genuine and real, it, it's hard to imagine. Uh, I've heard so much about the senator, and when we were uh, backstage waiting to come out, uh, he started quoting Bible verses, and I thought to myself, this is not just an athlete who nods to God, you know, like, yay God, you know, when he wins, but this is a man who really believes what he says, and lives what he says. It's a privilege, man. And he does it. He does it. Uh, please start to memorizing verses because it's very important to memorize verses. It's, uh, it will remind us when, when in the daily uh, activities that we are going to do, works so like that. Um, it's helped a lot. Like me, uh, in my in my status, like uh, there's a lot of distraction, temptation, and, and I have the word of God. Okay, uh, like. Um, I have hidden in, my, in, in, in Psalm 119 verse 11, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. So I have hidden his word to my heart that I might not sin against him. So it's things, it's things like that. And also I, in, in, in James 1 verse 19 and 20, it says that my brothers and sisters take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, it's slow to speak, it's slow to become angry because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. So, uh, I love you, mommy. In, in, in Romans 6, verse 12, it says, Romans 6, verse 12, and do not offer any part of yourself to sin as to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourself to him as those who have been bred, brought from dead to life. Offer every part of yourself to him, to him as an instrument of righteousness. So meaning, any part of yourself, especially eyes, your eyes, is, is the lamp of the body, okay? Uh, brothers and sisters, the eyes are the lamp of the body, okay? It will contaminate all your body. Okay, meaning, it's very interesting. One day, when I'm come back here, uh, one chance to come back here in Dubai, we'll go visit here in this church and, uh, uh, and one day, one service, I will come back here and preach the, 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 the uh, very important topic, okay? And thank you, and, uh, 
In other words, he was able to stand and read the scrolls, and he was kind of the president of the church, if you would. Now, this is very unusual for a man to be so young and so wealthy and to have such a prominent position in that synagogue. So clearly, his father must have died prematurely, and this young man inherited all this. So here he is, a young man who seemingly has everything. I mean, he's, he's famous, he's, he's, he's wealthy, he's got property, and he's, he has a great name. Uh, the man has literally got everything. Yet by his actions, we see what? That there's something missing. Just as uh, I've heard Senator Manning talk about in his testimony that uh, uh, a few years ago when, when the God came to him and, and, and that he saw that bright light. Uh, and, and, you know, he was a wealthy man. He was a successful champion then. But there was something missing. His soul was empty. His heart was broken. And so, so it is with this man. We know that because what does the man do? He runs to Jesus. Now, in biblical times, wealthy people didn't run. Even young wealthy people. And not only that, but when he got to Jesus, what did he do? The Bible says he knelt down, literally, in the Greek it says, he prostrated himself before Jesus. He fell before Jesus. This man is desperate. He's looking for something. What's he looking for? Well, tragically, he's looking for the wrong thing. And we know that because of his question. What does this question say? He says, what must I do to inherit eternal life? See, that's the flaw right there. This man had been taught, and, and, and the people had explained to him that the way you go to heaven is by how many good things you can do. You know, get in that ring and fight away, and at the end, hopefully, you will have done enough. Jesus immediately sensed this man was badly confused. That he had been badly informed. And so what Jesus is going to do, he's going to try three things to help under, the man understand the truth. First thing he's going to do is try to help the man redefine what he's, how he's using the word good. Because when the man came up and fell before Jesus, what did he say? Good teacher. Well, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And what Jesus wanted to help him realize was it doesn't have to do with, with human goodness. It doesn't have to do with how good you can be. The goodness comes from where? Yeah. The, um, the only one who's good, said Jesus, is who? No one is good but God alone. If you want to talk about goodness, talk about God. Don't talk about us. It doesn't matter how great anybody else may think you are. It doesn't matter how popular you may be, uh, how knowledgeable you may be, how many times you've gone to church, how kind of great family, religious family you come from. You know, my mother's this, my father's that. It doesn't matter. What matters is whether or not you've got the goodness from God through Jesus Christ. Because the Bible will tell us that there is, there's no way we can ever be good enough to earn heaven. We can't do it. It's impossible. That salvation only comes through Jesus Christ, who came to be our sin sacrifice, to die for us, in order that his goodness might become our goodness. Well, the man apparently didn't, didn't catch that at all. So Jesus went to point two. Look at this. This is in verse 19. He says, you know, and surely the man did because he was, again, one of the leaders of, of the synagogue. You know the commandments. And then Jesus runs off a list of five of the great Ten Commandments, that the, the Ten Laws that Moses had gotten 1,500 years earlier. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not defraud. Honor your father and your mother. Now, it's interesting that as Jesus shared these things, he was, I think, hoping the man would realize, I, I, I can't do those things. No one can do those things. Because although the religious teachers of the day would say that the way you obey these commandments was outwardly. In other words, as long as I haven't actually murdered anyone, I'm okay. As long as I haven't committed adultery with another person who's not my uh, husband or wife, I'm okay. But as we know, Jesus interpreted these commandments of Moses very differently. Over in Matthew 5, in the Sermon on the Mount, at the very beginning of his ministry, how did Jesus interpret the commandments? He basically said what God really means there is... That if you've become so angry at somebody that you wish you could kill them or choke them or, you know, you wish they were gone, you've committed murder. Guilty. If you've ever looked at a, a, a woman or man to lust after them, bingo, guilty. Guilty as charged. It's the same. And if you've ever looked at something and, and wanted that thing or tried to figure out how you could get that thing, if you've coveted, that's like stealing, Jesus said. And you can go on down the list and see that the, that the righteousness or the efforts of humans are nothing compared to the holiness of God. 
That's why the Bible says, for all of sin that comes short of the glory of God. There's no way that the wages or the payment of sin is eternal death. But thanks be to God who gives us the free gift of salvation through Jesus Christ. So, so he was trying to help the man. And he even used a special command that's not in the Ten Commandments. It's that phrase, do not defraud. You see that? Do not defraud. What's he talking about there? He's talking about uh, this word defraud. It's, it's kind of like a rich person's sin. It, it, it's a word which means to cheat or to deprive somebody of something. Uh, we see it over in 1 Corinthians 6, where the Apostle Paul says uh, to the, the Corinthian believers, Stop defrauding each other. Because you're taking each other to court, you're trying to, to beat each other of, you know, a few shepherds, you know, I'm not going to pay you. It's not paying somebody what they're, it's an employer who doesn't pay you what you owe them. That's, that's defrauding. And, 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 and so we don't know exactly what was going on. But you know Jesus. He could read the hearts of people. That was one of those divine nature things that he had. As God, as God, man, as God and man, he's all man and all God. And one of the God parts was that he could look into your heart and see what was really there. And so he looked in this man's heart. He had something going on with defrauding. We don't know what. But somehow this rich man was richer because he wasn't paying people what they needed, he needed to pay. And so what did the man say? And you can only imagine maybe he was a little taken back by this. But he had the, he had the answer that he'd been taught to give. And what is it? Oh, uh, teacher. Uh, he said, all these things I have done for my youth. You see the humor in this, but I think Jesus must have had a smile on his face. I mean, here's this young guy, he says he's a young man, he figures he's got to be maybe early 20s, mid 20s at the latest. I mean, the life expectancy back then was 40, so he couldn't have been very early if he's called a young man. So here's Jesus, he's telling Jesus, of all people, oh, I've done these ever since I was a young man, you know, long ever since I was a youth. What was that, four or five years ago? <laughs> you know, come and, come and talk to me 50 years from now after you've been doing those things. And even that will still not be enough. So he said, uh, I've done these things from my youth. And that's when Jesus decided if he was going to reach this man, he had to use the big gloves. He had to hit him with, with the biggest thing he could hit him with. Hopefully, his purpose was not to keep this man out of heaven. His purpose was to get the man into heaven. But he had to wake him up. To this blindness that he had, that he was going to somehow be a good enough man to get in heaven. And so at that point, Jesus knew exactly what he needed to do. Look at this. This is an amazing, this is the most important verse in the whole passage. This is verse 20, uh, 21. And Jesus, looking at him, loved him. Isn't that incredible? Uh, the, 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 the original says that, that he gazed earnestly at him. He, he, he really stared right at him. And when he looked into his eyes, what did Jesus see? He saw a man who needed forgiveness. He saw a man who needed saving. And Jesus loved him. He loved him. Matter of fact, this word love is the word agape. It's the same word that we read over in uh, that wonderful verse, John 3, 16. For God so loved or agape the world, that whoever believes in him, has faith in Jesus, will not perish, but will have everlasting love. Same word. And Jesus looked at this man, and he loved this man, and because he loved him, he said, I've got to tell him the truth. And here's the truth. And so Jesus said to him, you lack one thing. Think about that. All the things Jesus could have said, here's one thing that you lack. You lack one thing. Go sell all that you have, give to the poor, and you'll have treasure in heaven. Stop worrying about your portfolio on earth. Stop worrying about your investments in heaven. You'll have treasure in heaven. And come. Follow me. What did the man do? Casting his face down, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Now, I don't think Jesus was saying that the way to go to heaven is give all your money away. That, that everybody has to give. That, you know, this is like communism. I, I don't think that's what he's saying at all. Uh, otherwise, <laughs> there'd only be the four poorest of people in heaven. You know, God says that with the poor you will have with us always. And I think that means we'll also have people that he blesses with wealth. The wealth that wealth people have with us always. It's not a matter of how much you have, it's what you do with it. And the more important thing, at least for this man, is what your heart attitude is towards those things. Because what Jesus was trying to help this man realize, was that even though he couldn't reach him by talking about the bottom five commandments, he decided to go to the very number one commandment. Because that's where the man's problem was. What was the first commandment? You remember? What's the first, very first commandment God gave us through Moses? 
You shall have no other gods before me. You shall love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Why was this man loving? He was loving his wealth, his money, his inheritance, all his property. And so when it came down to it, the man had to decide, am I going to turn away from this idol of wealth and follow Jesus? Or am I going to hold on to my great wealth? And obviously we sadly know the decision he made. You know, I once read that everyone has a choice in life about which kingdom they're going to live in. There's only two kingdoms. There's the kingdom of God and the kingdom of self. And everyone has to decide where they're going to live. Let me ask you a question. Where do you live? What one thing may be keeping you from heaven, that thing that you have placed is more important than anything, even God? Oh, you wouldn't admit it. Maybe it's buried down deep. And, and you put on a good face, and maybe you even uh, on Friday go to a church. Or, or, or maybe you're a person who, who has great faith, and you, boy, you, you, you brag about that. But you know, and God knows, in the depth of your heart, the thing that you most treasure is not Him, but it's what? It's your job, it's, 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 it's a relationship, it's an addiction. I mean, it's, 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 it's being popular, you know, your life's a big popularity. Kind of, what is it that makes you tick? What is it that fills your soul? That's what Jesus is talking about. And what he's basically saying is that in order to truly have faith in me, to truly be my father, to know that therefore your sins have been forgiven and you have received the righteousness of God, you've got to be willing to turn away from other things and follow after me. There's that passage, he says it, listen to this, this is in Luke chapter 9. Then Jesus said to the crowd, if anyone wants to come after me, you must give up your own ways. You must take up your cross daily and follow me. If you try to hold on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. What does it profit you if you gain the whole world and you are yourself lost and destroyed? <coughs> We all have a decision to make. We all have a decision what we're going to live for. We all have a decision what is going to be the one thing that we really treasure. Is it going to be God through Jesus Christ? Or is it going to be something else? Sadly, this rich young ruler decided it was something else. You know, when you get to heaven, God's not going to ask you how much money you have. He's not going to ask you how popular you were with your friends. He's not going to ask you how successful you were in life. He's not going to ask you, uh, you know, <laughs> whether or not your name was famous. What he's going to ask you is something else. But let me let me finish with this uh, this story. Well, by the way, let me just say before that, this really isn't the end of the story of what happened uh, at this time in, in Mark chapter 10. There's some other things that go on. And uh, it's, it's incredible. It's told also in Luke chapter 18. And we have for you today a free gift. Uh, if you'd like to take one, you can take one of these cards. It has a wonderful picture of Manny on it. And uh, on the back, it has uh, a little explanation about uh, faith in God. And then it's got a free download place. And you can download a wonderful book called The Essential Jesus that contains the Gospel of Luke. And the rest of what happened this day with this man is found there in Luke, in Luke chapter 18. And, and it's a completely free gift. You can have it on your phone, your computer, whatever it is. Uh, uh, it's yours. Uh, it's got in the very beginning so a few pages where it says, previously in the Bible, which is interesting. Uh, it kind of gives you the background. And at the end, it's got a wonderful explanation of how you can put God first in your life and have faith in Him. Anyway, pick one of these up. But let me finish with this story, which I hope you'll never forget. Um, it goes like this. On March 14th, 1989, the last of the Habsburg dynasty to rule as monarch died. The Habsburg had sat on the throne somewhere in Europe for nearly a thousand years. The final member was Prince Zita of Bourbon, <coughs> wife of Emperor Charles. She died at 95 years of age and was buried in Vienna. Six thousand people walked behind her black caisson as it was drawn through the streets of Vienna. And St. Stephen's Cathedral packed with dignitaries, uh, the, the rich and famous of Europe, presidents and prime ministers, all waiting for this last great nobleman. As was tradition, when the body arrived, the cathedral massive wooden doors were closed. And the man leading the procession climbed the stairs, and with a wooden mallet, he banged upon the door. Bang! 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 And a voice came from within. Who goes there? 
And the man answered, Zita, Queen of Bohemia, Horatia, Solzhenia, Galatia, Queen of Jerusalem, Grand Duchess of Tuscany and Krakow. And after a pause, a voice came back from within. I do not know her. Another nod. Who goes there? Zita, her imperial royal majesty, empress of Austria, the apostolic queen of Hungary. And again the answer came back. I do not know her. A third nod. Who goes there? Zita, a sinning mortal saved by the cross of Jesus Christ. And the wooden doors swung open. That was a wonderful tradition they had in the Habsburg dynasty. That's something we need to think about. I would encourage you. Yeah, thank you. I would encourage you to picture this. Picture heaven. Not, not. Who goes there? The great Manny Pacquiao. The only world champion in eight divisions. The uh, first boxer to win lineal championships in five different weight classes. And according to Ringer Magazine, the greatest southpaw fighter of all time. <laughs> Then there'd be a pause, and we'd hear a voice say, I do not know him. <laughs> knock, knock. Who goes there? Manny Pacquiao, congressman, senator, humanitarian, builder of hospitals, schools, and churches, five-term president of the Philippines. <laughs> A mortal sinner saved by the cross of Jesus Christ. And the gates of heaven would open wide and the voice would say, Come in, my good and faithful servant. Come into your reward. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. Heavenly Father, today we thank you for the opportunity we've had to